This is me flying away from an explosion, all because I saw a video on the internet and thought I could try it myself. But to understand how I got here, we need to go back in time about a year to when I was watching my favorite series on YouTube, Stuntman React from Corridor Crew. And they were explaining a stunt called an air ram. It's when the stuntman gets launched into the air using a pneumatic device. And I thought to myself, hey, that's pretty cool. Hey, that's pretty cool. And being a huge fan of making compressed air powered stuff, I decided I needed one. I've always wanted to make movies. And recently I fell down the rabbit hole of learning mechanical special effects. So this project seemed like a perfect challenge. I have huge respect for stunt people. They're amazing. To me, they seem like part athlete, part engineer, having to do crazy things with their bodies and figure out complicated rigging and equipment. And I'm fascinated with the idea of making myself look like an action hero on camera. So I wanted to see how far can I get by brute forcing my way through this stunt with my understanding of engineering and physics. And to prove that, at the end of this video, I filmed a legit action scene with gunfire, grenades, and me getting launched through the air by an explosion, all using real practical effects. This is my first time actuating this thing. I've got it at 100 PSI. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, that was violent. 25 pounds. Same pressure as before. Three, two, one. And I'm gonna stand on this thing? Like most of my projects, it started with a 3D model and sending those drawings to be CNC cut out of sheet metal, then welding them together with some steel tubing on my fixture table. Let's see how strong this thing really is. Oh, dang it. Man, it looks so much stronger on the computer. I knew I should have ran a simulation. And once I bolted the two halves together with pillow block bearings and aluminum spacers, I could install the hydraulic cylinders. Oh my gosh. I may have overbuilt this just a little bit. This is insanely huge. This is a four inch bore cylinder. I have two of them. I've seen some air rams online that had like one or two inch and a half bore cylinders. And then I saw one with two four inch cylinders and I thought I'd like that. Normal pneumatic cylinders are rated for like 250 PSI, but because I want to run this at a super high pressure, plus a pneumatic cylinder would probably destroy itself when it bottoms out moving as fast as I want it to move. So I went for a hydraulic cylinder, which is rated for 2000 PSI. And I plumbed the cylinders to a quick connect fitting using a N line, which is super easy to make custom length hoses with. It's normally used for oil and fuel lines on vehicles. I used it a ton on my truck when I recently LS swapped it. But it also has a super high pressure rating. All of the quick connects on this project are flat face hydraulic couplers, which are great for keeping out dirt and junk. And to power the air ram, I built this power supply. It's way overbuilt because I future-proofed it for other projects. It works off this compressed nitrogen bottle and that air is split into a high pressure system and a low pressure system. The big red tank is the high pressure system and can handle a thousand PSI. That air runs through this air actuated ball valve and through this quick connect to the air ram. You might have seen this ball valve before on my Mark III air cannon. It's really good at opening fast and having a really high flow rate. And to open that valve, it uses air from the low pressure system, which splits off from this regulator to fill this smaller tank between 25 and 125 PSI. It then runs through this electric solenoid valve and turns the actuator on the ball valve. These tiny air filters you might recognize from an engine are here to muffle the air when it hisses out of these exhaust vents. The filters alone, however, weren't enough, so I stuffed them full of strips I cut from polyester filters. The power supply is armed by installing a battery, flipping this switch, and plugging in either the trigger or the pressure pad on the air ram. That way it fires right when I step on it. I also have provisions for triggering other special effects at the same time. It outputs power to these terminals when triggered, which will come in handy later in this video when I need to trigger my air mortar. All of this, including the hoses for this project, fit inside this sick military surplus case that I added wheels to. That first test with the sandbag was promising, but I wasn't quite ready to get on it myself, so I needed a volunteer. 
This is my new friend. He's a rescue mannequin used for search and rescue training. It's super rugged. It's made of abrasion resistant fabric and rubber boots. It weighs 110 pounds. And it's mostly filled with bags of rocks and it's got anatomically correct weight distribution throughout all the limbs and stuff. It's got bones. They're plastic bones. It doesn't have joints. You can bend the arm in any direction. It even comes with a very uncanny face. You should be very thankful I didn't buy the wig. It's made by a company called Ruth Lee, and I bought it from Rescue Tech. The manufacturer actually says you can drop this from a two-story building, run over it with a 4x4, and bury it under concrete and steel rubble. That's good, because I'm going to need all of those attributes for what I have planned for this thing. Now, pal, you're going to see some abuse. Uh, do you have any reservations before I put you through what I just mentioned? Excellent. Your feet are by your head. That's not right. Crash test dummy on 800 PSI air ram in three, two, one. <laughs> the thud, it just went straight up. It was all looking great until I found a huge flaw in my design. I thought it would be okay, but I was very wrong. Look how mangled this gusset is. That's eighth inch steel. And I noticed it because this is supposed to be angled up higher at 45 degrees. The problem here is this gusset plate is in compression when gussets should normally be in tension. Man, so if those gussets are bent, then that tubing, the angle, oh my gosh, dang it. There's the deformation in the tubing. My crappy welds broke. I have two paths going forward. I could either bend this out straight and add a bunch of more stiffeners and re-weld it or start from scratch on the moving part. And that's just what I did. I decided to build the upper again from scratch. And since my CAD file was parametric, it took me less than an hour to add a bunch more structure, remove all the lightning holes, and thicken up some sheet metal. This was my first time designing something to be both lightweight and really strong. But after seeing it has plenty of power to move itself, I did what I normally do for my projects and just eyeballed the structure and made it extra beefy. And having made those changes, I sent the drawings to this video sponsor, Senket Send. I like that there's a lot of mixed materials on this project. We've got carbon fiber, really thick steel, really thin steel, and aluminum. I've got a bunch of half 13 holes tapped in these steel parts. It's super cool to have a CNC cut and brake formed part that I designed, and this is going to hold up the ball valve in the power supply box. They're always adding new services too. Like now they have anodizing, plating, powder coating, countersinking, and hardware like studs and nuts. Plus, their turnaround times and shipping are super fast. Use this code and the link in the description for 15% off. After completing Mark II of the Air Ram, I continued to test it by throwing my 110 pound test dummy because I wanted to see it launch something close to human weight before I got on it. It was a little awkward to fit on the foot pad because of how wide it was, which made it launch straight up and I've been actuating it with the manual trigger, but I want to test out this pressure switch. So I'm going to plug this pressure pad into the control box, and then I'm going to toss a sandbag onto it. All right, I've got it set to 350 PSI. The system is now armed. That means any weight that goes on that pressure pad, this thing's going to go off. Okay, <laughs> I'm super nervous. Okay, three, two, one. Oh my God. <laughs> But hey, that was good enough for me to proceed with man trials, and I suited up for action. I'm all padded up. Back pad, helmet, elbow, knee pads. I forgot my padded underwear. I think I'll be okay without it. So the goal here is to start small. I wanna do just a tiny little bunny hop. I'm gonna start by standing with both feet on the platform, and my brother is gonna trigger it manually. I hope I'm ready for this. Man, it's hard to see without my glasses. I hope I dial in the pressure gauge, right? 25, 50, 70, 2, 4, 2, 4. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared. Okay, I'm gonna put my feet wide, kind of get a squat and lean forward a little bit so I don't go up or backwards. Army. Okay, on my mark, 3, 2, no, 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 no. oh god, <laughs> you can't fake me out like that. <laughs> Army, you're hot. All right, three, two, one. 
<laughs> God, I'm nervous. Okay, 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 okay. 80 PSI in three, two, one. <laughs> it's almost more dangerous being too low in pressure. I think you just need more. Yeah, okay. This is 150 PSI. Arm it. You're hot. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Um, How's your back? I feel like... <laughs> I, feel like... I, can, I can see it in you. You're like... <laughs> it's really dangerous at low pressure because I land back on the machine. Let's try 150 again, but I need some forward momentum to carry me away from the air ram. And we're gonna switch to the pressure pad. This is the first running test, stepping onto the pressure switch. In three, two, one. Do you see my shin hit it? Uh -uh. My shin hit this edge. It's a good thing I was wearing pads. Oh, my shin pad broke, keeping those on for sure. My quad is on fire. My quad is burning right now. That took a lot of, a lot of muscle that I don't have on my leg. <laughs> I think that gives just massive props to actual stunt people who are real athletes and train for this and don't just think they can engineer their way through it. I'm gonna stop using the helmet because I don't think I really need it with these pads and the chin blocks my view of my last step onto the pressure pad. This is um, 120 PSI. I'm glad I wore these sturdier shoes because I blocked my toes on something. I was having a lot of trouble with leg strength, but despite the nerves, <laughs> I continued but at a lower air pressure. And I was finally able to have a successful jump. That was genuinely fun. Like everything before that, I was shivering. And now, rock solid. <laughs> <laughs> Whiplash. I feel that tomorrow. That's a lot to think about when I'm jumping off that thing. I have to think about my foot placement, be prepared for the force on my leg, fly straight through the air, roll over at the last second, and act and deliver like a reaction to whatever just happened to me. A lot of respect for stuntmen. And once I proved that Mark II was gonna work, it was time to give it a sweet paint job, install the carbon fiber covers, and spend a ton of time training with it to get me a step closer to filming that epic action scene. I think I just found the secret. To handle more pressure, I need it to accelerate slower. So it's not just a ton of force all at once. It starts out slow and then it ramps up in speed at the top end. Remember the low pressure system that turns the ball valve actuator? Well, if you turn down that air pressure, then the valve opens slower, which means the air ram actuates slower, allowing my leg to handle more force. So I reduced it from full pressure down to the minimum. And that allowed me to keep training. Uh, I forgot to arm it again. I wasn't getting nearly enough height. So to change that and to avoid all the whiplash I was getting, I decided to try landing on my feet and rolling out of it. That was much better. Man, remember that first time my leg totally buckled? That was at 100 PSI. I just did 110 PSI because the valve actuated slower and I think we're making progress. Now let's talk about air pressure. Remember, my power supply can handle up to 1000 PSI and I read that the professional air rams are operating between 200 and 800. That's a lot of pressure, but I'm way down here, barely anything. But from the looks of it, they use smaller actuators. The smaller the diameter of your actuator, the more air pressure you need to have the same amount of force. That means that my monster four inch diameter actuators need less air pressure to launch the same distance as the pros. For the finale scene I wanna film, I'm gonna be jumping over some prop boxes. So I'm gonna put this here just to see if I can get tall enough. Three, two, one. Oh, that was so high. I'm gonna do that again, that was so much fun. Remember, the goal is by the end of this video to have learned how to use the air ram enough to film an epic action scene with gunfire, explosions, and me flying through the air in slow-mo.
I love 70s and 80s TV shows, and it seems like they used air rams a ton. And I wanted to film a cheesy fight scene inspired by the greatest TV show to ever exist. I decided to model it after a specific scene in the A-Team where Brandon would play the invincible B.A. Barakas, and I played the bad guy who got tossed around. My brother and I had a great time pretending to punch each other. <laughs> B.A.'s fight scenes always ended with an iconic shot of him throwing some goon over the camera, so I wanted to try replicating that. We tried this one camera angle that was similar to the scene we were copying, but it just didn't feel 80s enough. So I had Brandon lay down on the pads so I could jump over him. <laughs> we had a couple close calls, but eventually I got the hang of it. And then I just needed one last clip of me landing on the ground to finish it off. It was finally time for the big action scene, so we packed up a U-Haul with all of my gear and props and headed to the location. I planned the scene to be a firefight, where I was pinned down behind a barricade made of all the surplus shipping cases that you see in movies. I may have a problem, I'm kind of obsessed with them. They're just so cool. In this firefight scene, I was shooting back with a blank firing theatrical prop. It fires 9mm blanks and has several features that make it mechanically impossible to put a real bullet inside. Also, I made sure that there were no firearms or real bullets on my set, and every time before calling action, my brother and I would both verify what was in the gun. And I'm so glad I used it because, man, those blanks look incredible. There's no way I could fake this with digital effects. I mean, look at how good the muzzle flash and the ejected shells look. And see all that dust it's kicking up and how I flinch when I fire it? So good. And for the effect of some bad guys firing at me and bullets hitting the barricade, I bought these dust hits that fire out of a paintball gun. They're acrylic paintball shells filled with different colors of dust. I bought some with Fuller's Earth and some with charcoal dust. The black dust hits are a bit much for these plastic containers, but I'd rather use those than put digital effects in afterwards with my skill level. For the action scene, I needed a reason to get launched by the air ram, so I decided a grenade would go off behind me. I had a fake grenade, but that meant I needed an explosion. Normally in movies when they need a dirt explosion, they use actual explosives and a little steel mortar filled with a bunch of dirt and cork for debris. Eventually I'll mess with explosives, but this time I just wanted to start out with something I was familiar with, compressed air. So in the spirit of this video using practical effects, I built an air mortar. It uses the air tank and valve left over from my Mark II air cannon, and that's plumbed into an oil drum I cut down and welded a threaded bung to. I'm starting out with just shooting dirt now, but I build this thing to eventually shoot tremendous fireballs, hence this great big bendy hose rated for 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is movie dirt. It's anti-caking agent they put in animal feed, but it looks awesome dispersed in the air or dusted on someone. I had 120 pounds of this stuff shipped to my house along with some two inch cork sheets that you can break up to simulate rubble. And so I grabbed my jar of dirt and filled up the drum with a few quarts of it, added some cork, charged the air tank to 150 PSI, and kablooey. Well, it was very underwhelming at first, but I figured the oil drum was too big. I need more pressure and more dirt. What if we just like cut down the volume and put this cork in as a baffle? So I improvised and added a ton more dirt and debris. Three, two, one. Oh, that was spectacular. If you thought that was cool, make sure to subscribe because I have a ton more special effects projects lined up that are way bigger. And since I included these terminals on my power supply, that meant that when I stepped on the air ram switch, it would send signal to the solenoid valve that triggered the air mortar. That way, me jumping was perfectly timed with the explosion. And by this time, it was the end of the day. We had just enough daylight left for one take. I was super nervous and stressed out running through a giant checklist in my head.
reaction look good on camera. I was thinking of a lot of things all at once, but I'm very happy with that. <laughs> oh, that looks spectacular. <laughs> oh, did you yes. like <laughs> And all of that came together to make this action scene. Yeah. And man, did it turn out incredible. It looks just like the movies. Have I earned the title of action hero? I don't know, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs>